All right, everybody, we are back. Um, and Admiral Razak will look to the three of you and go, Before we proceed, would you want like a cup of tea? I would love a cup of tea. Actually, yes. Terrific. Yeah. Great. That sounds sure. nice. All right, give me just one moment and I'll be right back. And there will be sort of a, like, little knock on the door and then clunk and it'll open up and she and her two large goons will file out the door and then a moment later clunk and the door closes leaving you Silius, do they ever drug the tea yeah. uh not to my knowledge but i wouldn't put anything past them Okay, that was maybe my she... initial thought. Yeah, yeah. I thought maybe she just likes tea, but then then the way she said, all right, I'm not so sure, so maybe yeah, good to, good to think about it. I don't know. What kind maybe of monster it's true drugs tea? tea? Maybe it is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The chanting won't help with that. No. She but... does already seem to know almost everything, though. Yeah. yeah. Thank goodness we forgot about that's why the Rakshasa wanted to go after us. Like, yeah. My goodness. I, I truly had a moment of, did, did I live something that, <laughs> that has been wiped from my memory? Um, but now uh, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. Um, now going to make us go on a mission. Everybody roll me a quick insight check too, please. Okay. That would only be a six for me. Uh, 16 minus one for 15. Okay. Five. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but, but a big five, perhaps? A big, big five. A big, big five. five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, so, Helen, I think that you're the only one that sort of, like, puts these pieces together in the order that I'm about to say them. Um, but, yes, like, this is kind of something that, like, I think was maybe discussed as a possibility at some point. But now this is, like, fairly hard um, confirmation that that Rakshasa assassin was sent after you because your old friend mm. Count Zalan hired them to um, go after you. Um, but also... The fact that Admiral Razak has the information from those letters, well, she might be just making it up to fuck with you. Um, but if she isn't, it means that she's able to read the language that those letters were in, which last time uh -huh. around when you spoke to uh, Maeve about this, she kind of went, uh, good luck finding someone that can read that shit. Um, right. And I think that Maeve also told you that it was the language of the Mind Flayers, right? That it was a written in Quaalit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, she sure did. She which, sure did. combined with the fact that this woman is a scion, raises some possibly fascinating and possibly interesting implications. Um, yeah. So okay. hold on to that in the back of your mind. Maybe we shouldn't drink the tea. <laughs> She does already know all this stuff, and at some point you think, do mind flayers attack with tea? I don't. Roll me a no. nature check. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Wait, that one is, that's cocked. Okay. Uh, my nature check would be 22. Oh, well uh, done. Mine is 16, so not so bad. All right. Um, so you know that basically, um, <laughs> mind flayers mainly attack in one of two ways. They okay. either just kind of send out a, like, mental psionic blast that incapacitates creatures, and then they enslave them in some way or another, be it either mm -hmm. through, uh, domination magic or just through trade, plain old horrible treatment and fear and everything else. Um, or if they right, are quite right, hungry, right. they will wrap their tentacles around a person's head and use their lamprey-like mouth to just bore through the skull and devour the brain. Um, not a lot of tentacles. Not not a lot. Not is, a lot of tea is not a lot of tea-related <laughs> <Right. laughs> attacks yeah. that you know of in the stories about okay. illithids and mind flayers. Okay. Ah. Uh... 
I mean, I, I don't think this lady needs to attack us through tea. Right. She just likes tea. Yeah, maybe she just likes tea. I, I can confirm. She does often drink tea. I've seen it through many, okay. many years. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> we've become we've become so suspicious, you know, and so cynical. Mm-hmm. But maybe well, some people just like tea. She is also quite sinister and knows a lot of things about yeah, us and can well, read that document and is going to maybe enslave us. But yes, no, we are very suspicious. Yeah, yeah. But not about the tea. Okay, yes, good. Maybe? I don't know. I trust you both. Whatever you say. Do you ever think we should just tell her about the Void Keeper and that we have to go and she should just leave us alone? I mean, that would be a good a good uh, test. Because if she just lets us go, then she's cool. If she doesn't, then she might be a mind flayer. Yeah, I feel like she probably would be more into enslaving us and doing it her way. Yeah, yeah, the probably. Or maybe happy. she'd want, yeah, maybe she'd want to help this council on. I don't know. Excuse me. Excuse me. The door mm-hmm. springs open again, and in comes, um, you know, um, Admiral Razak with a little folding table and a stool. And one of her goons follows with a um, tray that has a kettle and four cups on it. And they will set up the table and she will set up the stool. And they will just kind of uh, take a second to just, like, pour some tea into the four cups. And they'll give one to you, Helena, and one to you, Cal, and one to you, Satis. And then the Admiral will sit down on the little stool. And then a moment later, the guy will turn around and leave, closing the door behind him. um, Leaving... The three, well, four of you, counting Celios, alone in the room with Razak. Um, and she will stir a little bit of sugar into her tea and then say, Have any of you ever been to the royal palace at Valenport? No. No. It's quite a sight. Um, the royal chamber of the, um, the royal throne room of the Valenjal, the Prince of the Sapphire Sea, High Ruler of Soliana. It's a beautiful seat, but it's quite overshadowed by the fact that it has two dragon skulls, one on either side of it, old fossils from the ancient days that were dug up from the earth. They're quite big. They are almost 50 feet from end to end. That's The skulls? How, the skulls. That is large. That's that big. how big the things that you three have are going to get. And by the time that they are that size, they're going to be veritable engines of destruction. So I hope that you understand, having stood in the presence of these enormous skulls and seeing how big they are going to one day be, why I want to take a few precautions and make sure that we're all on the same page about this. I cannot in good conscience simply let three unknown X-Factors go out into the world carrying possibly the most dangerous weapons in the world once they've had a few years to grow in their presence without properly vetting them. Am I making myself clear? Yes, so far. Excellent. Which brings the question... What are the three of you doing? What are your plans? What do you intend to do with three dragons? With the first three dragons the world has seen in quite some time. With creatures that were so powerful that their mere birth caused a region of the world to flood and a town to be overrun by undead monstrosities. Is it so wrong? Does everything need to have a purpose? We just wanted to have some friends and raise them well like good parents. We found these eggs. We didn't know they were eggs for a while until they hatched. And now we feel responsible for raising them. And where did you find them? Question. Uh, Oh. Around. (laughs) (laughs) 
uh, Gabrielle's DM flashback corridor. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, we found them in the. Wasn't in, it in the possessed it, the house with the? With yeah, the, it was Sally in Sar- Sally, Starshine. Sally Soul Sally, Song. Basement. Yeah. Sally yeah. Soul Song. Yeah. And, uh, no, Starshine in, was the other person. Yeah. yeah. In Marwood. In Marwood Manor. In um, Marwood Manor. Where you were you were sent uh, in the basement of that house was mm-hmm. the. Uh, old Eldoran ruin that Deveril was trying to break right. into. And once mm-hmm. you broke in there, you saw a vision of an ancient Eldoran warrior, which we yeah. now know as the last cavalier, who yeah. charged you to protect these three eggs, although you didn't know that they were eggs. Yeah. Um, we'll, yes. we'll, we'll try to keep it vague. We'll say, oh, we found, them, we found them in an old house. We were doing a task for someone in town and came across them. And, you know, we were we were just... Picking up things that we thought looked pretty. They're just in the right place, but now they've grown accustomed to us, you see. Mm-hmm. They have. I, I I think that that is extremely clear. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So you just want the dragon's best interests. You are simply mm-hmm. looking to protect them and to make sure that they are properly taken care of. Yeah. Well, and as you say, you know, we don't want them to, like, burn the world down or anything like that. Of course, but we trust our own parenting abilities. We're yeah. doing our best. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I think that this is something that we can absolutely do good work with. Um. What 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 is this good work that you want to do with us, if I may ask? Oh, the same work that I'm doing right now. I want to protect Solony's interests. I want to make sure that my nation will be here 500 years from now, if not 5,000 years from now. Uh, so we are currently sailing to Summerstone, um, where the aviary of our flying squadrons, mostly made up right now of hippogriffs and wyverns, are kept. They are going to be the best place for the three dragons to undergo combat training and to undergo sort of everything that needs to happen for them to become proud members of the Solonese Air Force. And where the three of you will be guarded and ushered through the process of becoming Knights of Soliana and reared along with your dragons into proper agents of the Solonese crown. We should be there in two days' time. I'm detecting some apprehension, Miss Vance. Yeah, I mean, I just, look, look, I respect you greatly. Uh, The feeling Um, is quite mutual. Oh, thank you. But (laughs) I don't necessarily see this as my journey. Um, I never really could, I'm not great at, like, following orders. I kind of do stuff my own way. Um... Well, Miss so, Vance, as they say, practice makes perfect. I think that you maybe just need to spend a couple of decades at it, and by the time that you're done, you're going to be quite good at it. In the meantime, well, as the less disciplined and uncouth um, amongst my crew say when they think that I can't hear them, it may be the sort of thing where you need to lie down and think of Valenport. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite grim. It is not pleasant. No. The uh, interests of our nation, of, of your new nation, force us all to do things that are quite grim from time to time. Uh, hey, do, do we get, like, any say <laughs> in... Yeah, that seems to be the biggest limiting factor to our enjoyment of this, is the whole <laughs> lack of any sort of agency element. Yeah. Free, uh, free will. It's I, very cool. I, I, I'm I, sorry to say that the chain of command can be quite, quite firm, although you will find that it is not completely heartless. You will be taken well, you will be extremely well taken care of, you will be fed well, you will be given generous compensation, you will be given handsome living quarters amongst the shores of Summerstone, you will be only the most rudimentary of restrictive magics will be placed upon you to ensure your cooperation. It will all be extremely civilized. And uh, if we were to refuse? I discourage that. I imagine that finding new 
people that would bond with your dragons the way that you three have clearly bonded with your dragons would take time and effort. We would undertake that journey if necessary, but I would much rather simply keep things civil and pleasant. Your teas are getting cold. I take like a as if I'm taking a sip, yeah, but I don't actually take right. a sip. It's not just do the same closed lip to the mouth yeah. type. Yeah. Yeah. Roll me it's that performance get... check, please. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, right. Beth, what was that? Did Celios get any tea? No, Celios did. Celios was not offered tea, and he has not but, said no. anything while Razak has been in the room. Seems rather I unfair. Perhaps got... he uh, Helena, roll I... me a quick perception check. <laughs> I got a 12 plus 4 for 16 yeah, for my I got, performance. And I got a 19 for my performance. Chill. It's quite good. <laughs> and I got a 3 <laughs> minus 1 for a 2. <laughs> yep, very yeah, perceptive. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Very, very perceptive <laughs> indeed. That's all there is to it. Yep. I am. Well, I think if we're going to go along with this plan, we have to at least meet each other halfway. So tell me more. What what would that look like? Because you you I don't know what your way is. So far you've just told me that you're trying to make sure that these beasts are cared for, and I'm offering them a far better care than being discreetly shoved into a hole underneath the floorboards of a rickety old ship would be. So if there is something that you're doing, something that you could use assistance on, something that maybe the Solonese Navy would be invested in, I would be all ears. Hal, like, looks at Satus as she takes another fake sip. And Admiral Razak will go, you know what? I have some business to attend to. Why don't we revisit this in the morning, and we can talk about what compromise might look like. Okay. Okay. Have sure. a very pleasant evening, all of you. Thank you very much. Will, will we get our stuff back? Oh, in due course, I imagine. The Most of it's fairly pedestrian, but that sword that was in possession of Miss Hailstorm is quite something. Um, we'll want some artificers to take a look at it. I sincerely hope that they'll be able to figure out without needing to have it segmented, but we'll see what happens. Not, not to segment my sword. <laughs> it, it all in work. the course of learning, all in the name of science. But I can help you out with that. It will work with me. Well, that seems like a risk that we might be willing to take in due time. But for really the time wouldn't. being, we are examining it. Don't break it. I will do my utmost to keep it in one piece. Thank you all. And she will sort of fold up the little table and the, grab the stool. And with the hand holding the tea, kind of do like a little bit of a knock on the door. Which clunk opens. And, and then a moment later, slam and closes up. Well. Okay. Um... Do we have ideas of what we're going to come to the table for this bargain? Well, okay. As far as I see it, we, we've we got two options. We agree and go along with this until such time as we find an opportunity to not go along with it. And escape. And yeah. escape. Or, or we tell her a little bit more. Yeah, and tell her where we're trying to get. Yeah. And we and sell it as, in order to be stronger, for the dragons to be stronger. Yeah, and maybe we can tell her that something along the lines of we don't exactly know what we're doing, but we do know we're trying to stop something very bad from happening it would affect her too yeah and uh if we don't succeed there will be no soliana not mm. in not in 500 years not in 500 days right it 
I do wonder if that's the best course of action because I don't see a world in which we can... I don't know if we're going to be able to shimmy our way out of this one. No, and she... As our as our friend here has said, and I'm inclined to agree with him, she's maybe not the most trustworthy person, but if she... If we convince her that helping us is in her interests... Maybe. Yeah. I mean, okay. it's worth a try, perhaps. I, I suppose, I'm sort of thinking of role-playing it, if we tell her that, maybe she'll just want to take control of all of it herself. Yeah, that's definitely possible. And interfere on a massive level. Um, what would happen then? I don't know, it could be interesting. Um, hmm. But I do not want to join the Solanese Navy, guys. Yeah. No. I feel we would hate that. Although, yeah. they have nice uniforms. But other than that, I would... Other than <laughs> the uniforms. I, wa I, I want to be clear. These uniforms are <laughs> spiffy as fuck. Yeah. yeah. I did notice. And, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone, like, everyone on this ship looks so good in them that you think that they are perhaps custom-tailored for every member of, like, yeah. at least yeah. this level of like the intelligence department navy uh, but everyone sharp. looks super sharp and awesome in them maybe we stick it out long enough to get some of our own custom uniforms and Fancy. then we get back to saving the world <laughs> <laughs> we had two possible places we could go right we were we were heading yeah. to Basar and us but we didn't have to mm -hmm. do you feel that she would be less weird about us going to one or the other or at this stage it would just be much for muchness the only thing I can think is Amar is farther yeah and we yeah, did say that we were going to Ba Saranoth yeah I it's think. gonna be easier yeah so we could go we could go to Amar first but okay. just to throw her off our scent if we need to make an escape. Stick to the plan for now, I guess, in terms of direction. So what's the plan? Well, that depends <laughs> whether we go for telling her a bit more, seeing yeah. if that opens things up. Yeah. Or just basically doing a version of what she said until we can get out. Yeah, I just worry that we're never going to get out. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried we're going to start drinking the Kool-Aid, so to speak. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is no war in Soliana. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tea was, as much as you drank it at all, yeah. it was quite good. Just, yeah. Oh, good, good. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll have another sip. I'm going to have the lot. <laughs> yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> So you both think we should tell her a bit more? The we'll question just is how much do we tell her? Yeah. And what 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 are the things we say and what are the things we keep? Yeah. Secret. Well, here's the thing. The void keeper mm -hmm. seems to always return to you, Satus. Mm -hmm. It does not seem possible for us to lose that. Right. Right. And as far as the fiction we currently have established with her, we don't know what the Void Keeper is, and she, at least for now, believes that we don't. Yeah. It was just a thing in the note. Yeah. So we could show it her, and we'd still get it back, you're thinking? Yeah. That's that's one thing I was thinking. Um, right, we could, show, we could show it, and then say we don't know what it is. Yeah, but it's counting down to something. True. So if we are trying to let it be known, you know, we can just say, like, we have this thing. Oh, we didn't know it was called the Void Keeper. We just... Yeah. 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 And we could do that and and tell her that we we don't know exactly what we're doing, but we do know that we're trying to stop the end of the world. In that case, I wonder if we might as well tell her what we think it is. Yeah, if yeah. we're going down this route. Because 
that backs up the whole end of the world thing. Sure. Yeah. And our thought yeah. is, even if she tries to steal it, it won't It'll go away back. from me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we don't necessarily think she's... I mean, she's a bit evil, but we don't think she's yeah. evil, evil, right? We don't think she's on the side of Rakshasas and, and Vintas and the end of the world. Right. Seems like she just wants Soliana to rule the world. Yes, which is pretty alarming, but... Yeah. I mean, she has a vested interest in the world. Existing. Existing. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we're wrong. Unless we're okay. wrong. Okay. okay. But I again, if we're going to have to fight her at some point, we might as well know sooner rather than later, except that we don't have any stuff. We have no stuff. And mm. we can't do magic. Right. If she lets us out, we'll get us... We'll probably get some of our stuff back. Right, it and might yeah. be everything except for your sword, it feels like. And you'll yeah. be able to do some magic, but you're going to be monitored, so not quite clear, maybe? Yeah, maybe, probably. Let's hack through the ship. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. With the, it's very hard. With the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teacup is nice, though. You can break that, and then there's sharp, some sharp edges. I don't think that she oh, expects. Oh, that's a I good point. I don't think she expects you to be here more than two days, though. I think that she is probably right that we are hauling ass towards Summerstone, and then you're going to be let out of the ship. Yeah, I think in she'll probably the put a gaius on you. Or something of that sort. <sighs> I think what? in the interest of the Sorry, what? Gaius? <laughs> Sorry, <sadness. laughs> Uh Yeah, roll me a, uh, an arcana check, all three of you. Uh, Cal, you with advantage. You would probably have run oh. into stuff about this. <laughs> Ooh, I got a natural 20. A natural <laughs> 20. <laughs> Big magic boy, plus three. <laughs> Browsers. <laughs> yeah, nice. I, I, got a a I got a 19 oh. plus two for, for 21. You two so magical, so magical. But you're pretty magical yourself, Helena. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, Beth, what, did, what was? <laughs> how much was yours? It was a sixteen plus nothing. All right. Well, all right. Uh, I think with that, all three of you would know what a Gaius is. A Gaius is a spell that a powerful sorcerer or wizard or warlock can put on someone that compels them to do something. Um, and the moment that the person doesn't do that. Um, the Gaius causes them physical harm. Um, and for a lot of weaker beings, that amount of harm is usually enough to kill them outright. Um, mm. And there are some nuances, and not all Gaiuses are made equal. Um, so, you know, like, it's very different to kind of have a Gaius that is like, Hey, Sadas, I'm putting you under a Gaius. Kill this dude. And it's like, okay, I'll kill them in 50 years. Like, there is no, like, time frame on this. Versus gotcha. one that is, like, a little bit more well-lawyered might be, unless you have a written notice from this person, do not leave the borders of this town and follow all the direct orders given to you by this person in as expedient a time manner as possible, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um... But it is basically kind of a, like, magical contract that can be foisted upon you and force you to do it. It is an expensive and difficult spell, but it can happen. Okay. And Sadis, well. you would know on top of that, sort of, with your nat 20, you would know, like, there's probably a lot of, like, Faust-like stories in the world of Keldoren of, like, people that are, like... I need money. I'm going to go make a deal with this devil. And the devil puts them under a gaius and forces them to do, like, all kinds of horrible things. It is not something that you want to mess with. Okay. Well, if that's what's waiting for us on the on the side of not telling her the truth, I think telling her the truth, at least the reduced version, sounds like a much more palatable plan. Yeah. I think we should... Show her the void keeper. Mm -hmm. Say we just made the connection mm -hmm. that it it is right, the void right. keeper. That it's sure. been counting down. Mm -hmm. And uh and we don't know many details, but we've been going around collecting weapons to fight this e evil. Yep. Yeah. I guess maybe we should. And we need tell our her, dragons. Yes, 
Maybe we shouldn't tell her exactly where we're heading next or who yeah. to, because then she might yeah. just go there and try and take the weapons herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like a plan for now. Should we have a plan of what to think of if she if she asks us where we're going? I'm quite absent-minded, so um, <laughs> I just sort of think of a vast country. <laughs> oh, nice. Sea shanty still works for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. What are you going to think of, Cal? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tr- try to think of that sea, sea shanty. Okay. Or you could think of a location that's different, like a sort of decoy. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking of decoy location. Like, oh, where we was... Wanna, we don't want to get yeah. sent to the decoy location. No, or have her attack it, unless right. we want her to. We're still telling her we're heading for Bassa and Atho, right? We're... Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, just not yeah. specifics. Just I mean, we yeah. don't know specifically where we're going either. We sure don't. We... Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we, I don't think we tell her about the. Um, uh, you the do Eladrin. know. You do know that you are going to sell Duran. You actually have like yeah. specific yeah, 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 cities yeah. in both the in right, both Amar but... and Basarinath that you know that you're going to. But you don't yeah. have like a street address a that you're going yeah, to. Yeah, or yeah, something yeah. Like that. And I think, and I think we don't tell her about the Eladrin that we're looking for. Right? The the Apollo or whoever mm-hmm. it is in Correct, correct. In Seldoran and Yeah. Uh, I definitely don't think we give her names. I think she might see the pattern of us going places and getting stuff. Yeah, but, she but might, but there's nothing we can do about that. No, there's not much we can, no. Okay. So I don't love not- it, but I like it better than, you know, being mind washed and put under a curse. Or throwing these teacup shards at her. I mean, we could try, but I just don't think that's going to I think they just get the job off. done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. That's the plan. Well, mm-hmm. That's the plan. Cool. Yeah. Um. A couple of hours go by, and you sort of, I think, like, once you are done talking through your tactics, settle into the monotony of just being on this boat um, with very little to do. Is there something that you do to just pass the time? Is there, or are you just kind of quietly sitting by using, like, teacup shards to, like, carve markers onto the walls? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I suppose we might as well share sea shanties. Yes, yes. a sailor one, all yeah. the good ones. Yeah, I, I like yep. the idea of trying to strike up uh, any conversation with Celios just yeah. in case he gives any sort of like accidental or otherwise just gives us anything that we can, you know, glean extra little tidbits of info. He yeah. is a font of like. I, you know, like, absolutely, like, I was on this mission and this mission and, like, then this other thing. Or not mission. He would be like, I was on this, like, liberating um, raid that went to this town and liberated them from Solanese influence. And then I was here and then I was there. And finally, you know, on this, like, daring raid, Captain Razak's ship captured me. And they didn't want to kill me since I was a priest of the Horizon Walker. But since I'd served on five pirate vessels, I, I, I mean, uh, five liberating vessels, um, they had yeah, to take of one of my fingers for each vessel that I'd served in. Um, oh, so that's how you lost your fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, roll me just a quick history check, everyone. That is... 17 plus 8 for a 25. Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm a nerd. I'm a Look huge nerd. You. Natural one. <laughs> uh, I also have a natural one. <laughs> um. So, Helena and Cal, these stories are entertaining as all get up in. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful storyteller this man. Ooh. <laughs> Sadus, you like the stories as well, but there is um you start to after a while kind of like 
place some of them that you'd heard before or play some of these accounts of like piractical adventures um and sure it's possible that celios just kind of like happened to be in every single one of these stories that then like effectively made the news um but it's a little far-fetched and so you get the feeling that he is yeah that there's something going on here is he embellishing the story to make himself seem like a bigger badder pirate than he was Mm. Is he trying to kind of, like, sell you guys on something? Like, um, yeah, like, you kind of realize, like, sort of a, like, this is sort of someone that is, like, that, like, has done some research into, like, pirate tactics and pirate stories and is now, like, a little bit regurgitating them. Mm. Okay, okay. Mm. Keeping an eyebrow raised around this guy now. Is he? Mind you, Helena and Cal, you don't you don't know (laughs) this. You have you totally buy this. So unless Sadas tells you, this is not a thing that you spot. My concern would be, yeah, potentially he's spying on us. Um, Oh dear. Why do we trust people? Um, I think I would. I I think I would press Celius. I knowing all of this. Something to the effect of like you know, you were, so you were you were on every single one of these missions, all every of them? one, every one. Swear by my good left, uh, swear by my good right hand. Yes, very all mm-hmm. of them. That was weird. Okay, <laughs> very all, right. all of them. Mm-hmm. Huh? Uh, I'll just cut to it. That's impossible. Are you? What? So, how dare you tell me that my life? Is impossible. What are you talking about? I'm a bit. Look, I'm. I'm. Satus. I'm. I'm incredibly well read. I had not much to do in my hometown that I didn't enjoy. I read a lot of history books. For someone to be at every single one of these battles seems incredibly unlikely. It feels more like someone pulled up uh, a page from the the you know the at the uh, almanac of Wikipedia of of. Uh, you know the the olden land, and just read a listicle of every single battle that's happened and memorized them. I, I, I uh, yeah, yeah, and he will go to his cot and pick up the cot underneath which there is a bell, which he will pick up with his right hand and ring. Um, uh, and a moment later, thunk, er, the door unlocks and opens. And Admiral Razak walks in, and she will go, Jora, And Celios will go, yeah, sorry, they saw through me. Um, I, I think I got most of it anyway. So they're going to Bas Serenath right now, and then uh. later on to Amar. Something involving weapons that they're picking up. I'm guessing the same one as the fancy sword that that one over there has got. Uh, they need the dragons for it, so when you head that way, you should definitely take the dragons with you. And in due time, you should be able to, like, find the stuff that they're looking for. Uh, let's see, let's see. Void Keeper is a thing that that one's got. He'll point to Sadus. Uh, counting down to some big, bad, evil thing. Uh, they say that they're working to the end of the world. Uh, now, to their credit, they were coming around to telling you all of this sooner or later. But there was stuff that they wanted to hold back. So it's good that you ran this. Um, yeah, I can give you the fuller download. Can I come out now? I could really use a wash. And she will snap her fingers, um, and one of the goons will come and unlock the door. And Celios will, suddenly, with a complete change in his posture, now with the ramrod posture of a military man, will be let out of the cell. And with a little nod towards the three of you, Captain Razak will lead him out and close the door into the cells. You know, in the past, we were suspicious of fellow criminals <laughs> we, we, were. we were hyper suspicious of what's his head yeah we victor were. or whoever that was it he was yeah alive. yeah he was victor. great i liked should, victor yeah we should have kept that up we should have yep. kept that up well uh, well you know at well least that's that we yep. at least we're coming around to it so yeah. could have been worse yeah we're never trusting anyone again we mean it this time no. yeah <laughs> absolutely never again <laughs> Except Maeve. Except Maeve. 
Well, <laughs> out of necessity. Um, is she is she here? Maybe. The... No, oh, no, no. <laughs> the admiral. Re- re- no, re- no, no, no. She she closed the door behind her as she led oh, as she led so um, right. Celio slash apparently his real name is Jora out. We are alone for the first time, as far right. as we know. As far as we Hello? know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I guess we're telling her everything then. I guess so. I guess so. I mean, not, no. not more than what she has. Not names. Not more than yeah. Right, no, no yeah. names. Mm-hmm, no mm-hmm, names. No like, names. She doesn't need any more help screwing us over than she already has. So, mm-hmm. yep. Yeah, I think we're very much in the like, see what she's going to come to us with with this information, and then tell her no more. Yeah, she's got enough, and we'll see how she rolls with it. I hope the dragons burn and freeze and shock her. Yeah, just a little bit, or a lot, or a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) We've escaped from crashing ships before. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Wait, uh, what? I mean, we can't do magic, but Satus, you have that spell, don't you, where you can communicate with? I'd... Oh no, but you, but it, you have to be like with them. I, I have so, sending. But yeah, we'll 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 like, table uh, it for maybe well, when we're off the ship. Yeah, if we're off the ship. When? When? Okay. Sorry, I had a moment of despair. I'm back now. Good. A couple of hours go by, and you feel the sort of, like, steady crash of the waves. By your estimation, it is now probably very late at night. Um, When the door into your cell swings open, and in walks one of Rizak's goons, holding a tray with what looks to be three miserable pieces of bread. A far worse catering situation than the one that you got treated to earlier. And Mm -hmm. he will, you know, close the door behind him and take a key ring out of his hand and use it to lock the cell doors. And then he'll turn towards you and a strange thing will happen. You'll see sort of like the slightest hint of a blur. And then this man will trip and begin to fall. And as... The tray with the bread goes into the air, and you sort of see, like, the keys leave his hands. Things begin to slow down, and almost as if the color begins to drain out of the world. Until finally, the world around you is black and white, and this man, mid-trip, air flying through, bread flying through the air, key key of rings leaving his hands... Everything will come to a full stop. Everything will suddenly be frozen. And you'll hear a voice that you haven't heard in quite a bit say, Well, three of you have landed yourselves in quite an interesting little predicament. And from out of this man will step a figure of a unearthly beautiful 18 or 19 year old boy with black cow, curly cow, hair. Cow, cow, rain it in. <laughs> um, these beautiful aquamarine eyes um, and these beautifully tailored sort of fashionable dress um, outfit that stops at his feet, which are bare. Um, and you will see for the first time, and you know, he is the only thing that you are seeing in color as he steps out from this guard. And he'll sort of say... He, Well, it's been quite an eventful couple of weeks, hasn't it, since the last time we saw each other? And suddenly the curator will be right here with the three of you. Oh, oh, oh. No. Maybe, maybe good? Can't be worse. Uh, It could be worse. 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 Let's take five minutes and be right back, and we're going to see how, how, see how this goes. Oh, oh, man. Okay, great. <laughs> so give us just a moment, guys, and we will be right back. 